Okay, so uh, very last lectures. Okay, so uh, I think this lecture was one to actually leave the chapter. I forgot which chapter for the S space solution. Okay, but we're going to do a lot of like uh, practice. Okay, people to enter all the questions. All right, so everybody take out your phone. Answer this question first. Okay, we're going to practice like nine different type of questions. Okay, and I want to actually be able to see what kind of solution that you have. Okay, so based on the description that we have here, okay, decide what is it. Okay. Okay, we have four people to respond. Okay, hopefully we can actually get up at least 10 so we can actually explain this thing. Okay, so this is actually a question you're going to see in your typical questions, right? So it's a, assuming you have certain concentration of HF and give you the Ka of HF with the number. Okay, so this is actually a very standard uh, type of questions, and I hope by now everybody can see this is actually a weak acid solutions, right? So if you have a weak acid solution, then the things you do is actually you calculate the photon concentration using the square root of weak acid concentration times a Ka, right? So these are the simple thing that you should actually know, okay? So this is actually the simplest case. Most of students can actually answer this correctly, okay? Let's try another one, okay? Second questions. What's the solution? Okay, so, okay, interesting now. Huh? See, this actually where this confusion comes from because it's very, it's not so straightforward like the first one. Okay, first one is actually, I give you the concentration of HF, right? And I tell you the K of HF. Therefore, you know HF is a weak acid, right? So whenever you see a species with Ka, it indicates that thing is actually a weak acid. Okay, so in this case, what is actually the weak acid? HF is the weak acid, right? But the solution you have is what? NaF, right? It is not HF. I think everybody can see that, right? NaF is not HF. Therefore, it cannot be the same as HF, okay? In the acid-base chapter, okay, if it is not lead acid, it will be its conjugated base. Okay, so things with HF is a weak acid. Therefore, its conjugated base will be a weak base. All right, so by simply compare these two letter by letter, you should know that the NAF is a weak base solution. Okay, is that clear? Okay, you need to know this because. Once you see this, you know how to actually identify what kind of solution that you have. Okay, so this is actually a very easy way for you to actually identify what you have. Okay, so in this case, it will be the weak base solution. All right, any question for this? No? Okay. Ready for the next one? Okay, so now you have one n HF, one n NAF. The K of HF is 1.5 and 10 to the next 6, right? What is actually the solution? Okay, try to participate as much as you can because this actually thing you're going to encounter all by yourself when you do your final, okay? So the answer is buffer, right? So how do we know it's actually buffer? Because you know 
Okay, we can't do this step by step, right? Edge app is actually a weak asset, right? An app is actually a soluble salt inventory is going to give you F minus. Edge app and F minus, they are conjugated acid and base, right? And they all have good amount, right? In this case, they show one end of weak acid, one end of weak base, right? Therefore, they will actually coexist inside the solution. Okay, once you have coexistence of conjugated acid base solution, then you have a buffer. Okay, so that's actually a very important thing, right? Only weak acid can coexist with weak base. Okay, conjugated weak base. Okay, if you have a weak acid with a strong base, the strong base will enter with your weak acid. Only one of them will survive. Okay, so any question for this? I guess this is actually a straightforward case. Okay, let's look at the next one. Okay, so right now you have one N at that, 0.5 N on the OH. What kind of solution do you have? Okay, so far we have 11 students respond, right? You can see we actually got stuff got confused, right? So we don't really know what it is. Okay, so how do we actually make judgment of all these things? Okay, the answer is what? The answer will be the buffer. Okay, so how do we know it's actually a buffer? So let's do some simple analysis. Okay, HF, why is HF? Weak acid, right? That's one M, right? Okay. Again, okay, OH is a strong base. Okay. Strong base, it's actually a weak acid, strong base coexist, they're going to interact. Okay. Which one is actually the more abundant one? That's right, right? So you have more weak acid than the strong base, right? So all the strong base will interact with your weak acid. Okay. So what's the interact? What do they produce? So HF plus OH minus, they produce H2O and F minus. Okay, so just want to make sure everybody can follow this, okay. Right. So this actually the reaction that you know is going to happen. Okay. You can even generalize this concept as weak acid. You can actually use I typically use HA to represent weak acid. Okay. Plus OH minus. That's going to give you H2O plus its conjugated base. Right. So you have the things eventually going to coexist together. Okay. So this right now, all the OH minus. It's actually less abundant. You will be fully concerned, right? So this guy will be fully concerned. Okay, so this guy is coming from your right. Okay, so like all the miners will be fully concerned because you have less amount of an AOH. Okay, so once you got concerned, you actually produce A minus. Okay, so part of your HA will be concerned. Okay. So this will be concerned. Eventually, in the beginning, you have one M, right? This is actually point five M. Once this got concerned, that means actually you minus point five of your acid. This will become. So the here will be plus point five, right? So once you reach equilibrium, you're going to have like much H A and A minus. Right. So right now we have a situation where you are conjugated as base. They start to actually coexist inside your solution. Okay. 
and this go back to our previous example, right? Then you know you have a buffer solution. Okay, so I guess I should cover this one in the previous question too. Okay, if you have a buffer solution, how do you calculate your pH HH equation, right? pH equals to pKa minus log of acid over base, right? The acid will be your weak acid, okay? Base will be actually your weak base concentration. All right, so, so everybody follow the thing so far? Okay, because this actual part that confused the student the most. Okay, this actual part that make our average go down quite a bit for the weekend too. Okay, so I guess even by now, many of you may still feel confused. Okay, since we're going to do it again for our final, you need to actually re get the things uh, correctly. All right. Okay, next question. Okay, so majority you say strong base, right? So this is actually a wonderful, yeah, the answer is actually a strong base. Okay, but believe it or not, okay, I actually talked to a camp manager and then he told me that one of the questions that our section did poorly for midterm two is this. Okay, so inside your midterm two, there's a question actually to calculate the pH of the solution that composed of 1N HF and 1.1 F and AOH. Okay, majority of students think they can use HH equation to actually do the calculation. Okay, but that's not correct because under this case, okay. HF of course is actually a weak acid, right? And AOH is a strong base solution. Which one is actually the dominant species? And AOH, right? So an AOH is actually the acid has the excess amount. So the NaOH will actually fully consume your weak acid. So inside your solution, you're going to have the F minus and then 0.1 N NaOH, right? So 0.1 NaOH will be actually the species that eventually dictates your pH. Okay, so if I do this actually, OH minus concentration equals to 0.1. Calculate your pOH, calculate your pH. Okay, so this is actually the question that you should really uh, pay attention to. All right, so this is actually uh, one set of questions. Okay, we start from a weak acid and in various conditions, actually all the conditions we can have of the base, okay, and then actually to actually predict what kind of solution that you have, right? So in the next four, questions, four or five questions, okay, we're going to reverse this. We're going to start with a uh, weak base. Okay, and see whether you can understand the same thing. All right. Okay, first thing first. Okay, why is this solution? Okay, so this apparently is actually a weak base solution, right? So how do you know? Yeah, it give you the KB, right? So it give you the KB of NH3, right? If it give you the KB of specific substance, the substance has to be a weak base. Okay, just like the one HF, right? It give you the KA of HF, indicates HF is actually a weak acid. 
here it cannot give you Ka, it gives you Kb, right? Kb of certain substance means less substance is a uh, weak phase, right? In this case, NH3 is actually a substance that got provided, right? And if you look into the solution that you have, it's one and NH3, right? It's exactly the same as the one that was provided. Therefore, you know you have a weak phase solution. Okay? Everybody follow this logic? Cool. Okay, next one. Okay, so why is this solution? Okay, so apparently we still have some confusion here, right? So majority of you say it is a Weak acid, some they say weak base, some they say buffer. Okay, majority says weak acid, right? Okay, so the answer is actually weak acid. So, how do you know it's actually weak acid? Okay, so like I say, right, in the question, typically it provides KD value of certain substance, right? In this case, the substance is NH3, right? It is less substance, and only less substance is a weak base. Okay? So if you look at the questions, what is the actual solution you have? 1M NH4Cl. Is NH4Cl the same as NH3? It is not, means it is not a weak base, right? If it is not weak base, it can only be its conjugated acid. Therefore, it has to be a weak acid solution. All right, so Make sure you understand this logic, otherwise you're going to spend so much time trying to figure out what kind of solution that you have. Okay, so since this is actually weak acid solutions, right? How do you calculate the pH? The first is actually to calculate the photon concentration, right? So how do you calculate photon concentration? Square root of weak acid concentration multiply Ka, right? You have Ka here. You don't, right? So you need to calculate Ka from your Kb and Kw, right? So Ka is going to be equal to Kw divided by your Kb. Okay, once you got a Ka, once you know the concentration of your weak acid, plug it in so you can calculate your proton concentration. Therefore, you can calculate your pH. All right, everybody clear? Good, okay, very important, okay? All right, next one. Okay, so what is this solution? 1NH3, 1NH4Cl, the KD of NH3 is certain value. Okay, so majority actually give me the correct answer, right? It is a buffer, right? So the reason that you know it's a buffer is because you know NH3 is a weak base, right? NH4Cl is its conjugated acid. Okay, and you have a good amount of each other, right? Therefore, you have a buffer system. Okay, to calculate the pH of a buffer system, you use HH equation. Okay? All right, next. Okay, so most of you answer buffer. Yes, the true answer is actually buffer, right? So how do you know it's actually buffer? So first, you need to know what is actually the things that got provided inside the question, right? The first term, 
Um, H3 is a weak base, right? HCl is a strong acid. Okay, so if you have strong acid and a weak base, they are going to interact and they concern each other. Okay. Which one is actually the dominant species? NH3, right? You have more NH3 than the HCl. That means all the HCl will be consumed, right? So once it got consumed, okay, so this is actually things that you should know, right? You have a weak base, I use A minus. You have strong acid. You are going to form the weak acid once they interact with each other, right? So right now you have excess amount of weak base, NH3, right? You have small amount of strong acid. Okay. This is going to be fully consumed. This will be consumed to a certain extent. At the same time, you're going to produce that much of weak acid, right? So in the end, you're going to have 0.5 A minus and 0.5 HA, right? So you have the weak acid, weak base coexist. Therefore, you have a buffer solution. Therefore, HH equation. All right. Next one. Okay, so the true answer is actually strong acid. Okay, so again, if you look at your solution, you have NH3, okay, and then uh, which weak base, right? And HCl is strong acid. HCl is actually in excess, right? The main is that going to interact and consume each other. All the weak base will be consumed. The only thing that will remain inside your solution is actually your strong acid and then also the interacted weak acid, right? But a strong acid will be the species that dictates the pH. Okay, so all you to calculate is actually the pH from that remaining strong acid. Okay, so in this case, your strong acid will be still have 0.1 m, right? So your H plus, the photon concentration equals 0.1. So your pH is negative log, negative log 0.1, which equals to 1. Okay, so this I guess 10 different questions that should summarize all the possible combination of solution you're going to have. Okay, so make sure, make sure you can actually see those things clearly. Okay, if you didn't actually answer every single question correctly yet, okay, go back home and then practice it again and make sure you got that unique eye to see all this relationship. All right, so. That's actually how we are going to end start uh, today's lecture. Okay, so any questions? Okay. If there's no question, let's look at some examples, then you will see why this section is so important. Okay. All right. Get back to here. We only have a couple more questions to go through today. Okay, so this actual example we went through on um, previous lectures, right? So calculate pH of 0.4 m solution of sodium acetate given the Ka of acetic acid is certain value. Okay, so this is actually uh, kind of like the good example about the things we just went through previously, right? Because you can see it provides the Ka of CH3COOH, right? Which is actually a weak acid. 
But the question you have is a solution contains N A D H C E O O, right? So like, therefore, you know that is actually not a weak acid. Okay, it will has to be the conjugated base of the weak acid. Okay, therefore, it's a weak base solution, right? That's why we actually start with the OH minus calculation using the concentration of your base, multiply KB, right? And then we calculate KB using this KW over KA. Okay, and then you calculate your POH, then you calculate your pH. Okay, so this is actually something after the practice we have in the beginning, you should be able to see these things clearly now. All right. Let's start our discussion today for this one, I guess. I want to actually start with this one. Okay, calculate the pH of a solution prepared by adding 20 mil 100 N HCl to 80 mil of a buffer that compose 0.2 N H3 and 0.25 N NH4 Cl, where the Kb of NH3 is a certain value. Okay, so apparently the solution that you have, the AT new solution is a buffer, right? Because you will tell you it is a buffer already. Okay. So we have a buffer that have NH3 and NH4 Cl. Okay, and then you should know NH3 is a weak base because it gives you the KB of NH3, right? So you know, NH3 is actually the base. NH, NH4 CL is actually the acid. Okay, those are weak, of course. Then you add in HCL, right? So HCL is actually a strong acid. That means it's going to interact with the weak base inside your buffer. Okay, so I will just write the weak base as A minus. Strong acid, HCl, I will just write as H plus, they give you the HA, right? Which is like the weak acid. In this case, we'll give you NH4, so NH4, NH4 plus, okay? So we want to know how many more of each of these elements, right? So for A minus is 0.25 M times 80 mil, right? So this will equal to 20, okay, 20 millimole of the weak base, okay. Strong acid, you have 0.1 M, you have 20 mil, right? So this gives you two millimole, okay. Your acid is also 0.25 M, 80 mil, therefore you know you also have 20 millimole to start with, okay. So once you list this in cell, then you know the strong acid will be will interact with your weak base, right? Since you have access weak base, all your strong acid will be consumed. Therefore, you know you are going to do minus two, minus two, plus two. Therefore, in the end, you have eighteen of your A minus and twenty-two for your H A. Okay, so you only have your conjugated acid base in the solution. Therefore, you are going to have a buffer solution, right? So, since you have buffer, right? Then you know you can calculate your pH equals to pKa negative log of your acid HA over your base A minus. Okay. First term, pKa. Do you have your Ka here? You don't, right? So you only have the key. You only have the Kb, right? So you need to actually calculate your Ka first. Ka equals to Kw over Kb, which is ten to the negative fourteen divided by one point eight times ten to the negative five. They give you a value of five point five six times 10 to the negative 10. Okay, so that will be actually your Ka. Okay. So 
here it will be negative log of your Ka, 5.56 times 10 to the negative 10. Negative log, your acid right now is actually 22, your base is actually 18. Okay, so once you do that calculation, you will be able to get a pH of 9.17. Okay, and this is actually the answer to this question. Okay. Any questions for this? Okay, so if now let's look at another one. So it says hydrogen. NH2, NH2 has a KD value of 3.6 times 10 to the 6. If 100 ml of 0.5 N aqueous hydrogen solution is mixed with 100 ml of 0.5 N aqueous hydrochloric acid, what is actually the pH of the solution? Okay. But then first, you need to know what is your hydrogen? Weak base, right? How do you know it's actually weak base? Because it provides you the AB, right? Therefore, you know this guy is actually a weak base, right? And you say they want to mix this weak base with hydrochloric acid, which you know it should be a strong acid, right? Okay. And then the amount you add in. The weak acid and strong base is what? 100 ml of 0.5 M of weak base. 100 ml of 0.5 M strong acid. They have the same amount, right? Okay, so they are going to consume each other fully, right? So if you write an equation, weak base, you can write A minus. Strong acid is H plus. This and that is going to fully interact to produce what? H A, right? So like inside your solution, you are not going to have A minus. You are not going to have H plus. All you have is what? H A. Okay. H A is a weak acid. Right? So since it is a weak acid, the pH can only be lower than seven. Right. Seven is neutral, right? Base, you have pH larger than seven. As it's actually smaller than seven. The second one solve this question. Okay, since you know you have a weak acid, the pH will only be smaller than seven. All right. So using this simple concept can actually help you to solve and get the located correct answer quickly. Okay, any questions so far? Okay, so let's see what is the next question. Okay, it's QSP and KSP. Okay, so the very last one here about the acid base. Okay. So this question asks that if today at certain temperature, the percent dissociation of an acid is of in this concentration is 8%, calculate the Ka of this acid. Okay. So you need to know what percent dissociation is, right? The definition of that is what? The percent dissociation means actually the proton concentration over your weak acid concentration times 100%. That's actually the percent dissociation. Okay. Because we know this is actually a weak acid, right? How do you calculate the proton concentration? It's actually the square root of weak acid concentration times your Ka, right? So this, you can calculate using this, okay? And then these things divide by your HA, it's going to give you a value of 8%, which is A over 100, right? So here you know, the acid concentration is actually 1.4, right? Therefore, 
this equation becomes square root of 1.4 times your Ka divided by 1.43, sorry. Okay, this should be equals to A over 100. Okay, so using this one, you can calculate your Ka, right? Therefore, your Ka is going to equals to 9.2 times 10 to the negative 3. Okay, you have 9.2 times 10 to the negative 3 in your multiple choice. You don't, right? The one that's actually closest one is what? This one, right? 9.9. .9. So why does that get this group is here? <laughs> yes, so the problem, okay, not a problem, okay. All the calculation, all the equation I give you is actually, I assume, I assume the small x approximation will always be valid. Okay, but if you look at the k here, the k is actually not extremely small, right? It's 9 point something times 10 to the third, right? Previously, we say that if you want to apply small x approximation, then k a has to be smaller than 10 to the negative 4. Okay, so this means actually the small x approximation is not perfect here. But still, you can actually provide a very accurate estimation already, right? Even though there's some discrepancy, but you can safely pick up the one that's closest to this answer. Okay, so in this case, it will be 9.9 .9 times 10 to the negative 3. Okay, so these are the, some uh, examples I want to actually go through together with you so I can reinforce that your concept in determining what kind of solution that you have. Because once you know what kind of solution that you have, calculation is actually quite straightforward. Okay. All right. Any questions? If this is free response, and then you put in 9.2 times 10 to the negative 3, and if you don't get the full credit, what you should do is actually screenshot that and say to me, I will give you the credit back. Is that clear? Cool. All right, any other questions? Okay, so let's talk about the very last one. Okay, so one part of your midterm two is actually calculating the KSP, right? So key is actually, the concept you should know is actually if you have QSP larger than your KSP, then you are going to see the precipitate to fall. Okay, but if your QSP is smaller than KSP, then no precipitate will fall. Okay, so it's a very simple concept. Okay, the question you are going to encounter, okay, very often is that they are going to mix two salt, okay, and then ask you where, whether you're going to see the precipitate. Okay, and most of the time you will need to calculate the QSP first and then compare that to the KSP to predict whether the precipitate will fall, okay? In this case, it says, okay, the KSP of AGCL is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 10, okay? You need to actually know what the KSP represents, right? Because your AGCL, once they dissociate, become AG plus, plus CO minus, okay? So the KSP, will simply equal to the AG plus to the first power times your CO minus to the first power. Okay, so this is actually how the KSP was defined, but this is also how your QSP will be calculated. Right? So maybe I should just put QSP rather than KSP here. Okay. So, Right now it says, I'm going to combine solutions. Okay, one is 1.0 times 10 to the 2 calcium chloride. The other one is actually 1.0 times 10 to the 8 AgMO3. Okay, so for each element, you will be able to see something that's going to show in your QSP, right? So in this case, CaCl, then you should know that this is actually the source of your Cl minus. And no salt is actually soluble salt. Okay. 
CaCl2 is where they're going to put in the trip for you, right? So one more of CaCl2 is going to produce two more of Cl minus, right? So to compute the Cl minus concentration, it will equals to 1.0 times 10 to the negative 2 multiply 2. Okay, so that is actually the key of the answer this one. Okay, once you do that, then you know the first term of your QSP should be 2 times 10 to the negative 2. Okay, second term, AgNO3. Okay, so AgNO3 is also the Ag plus and the NO3 minus. It's a one to one conversion. Therefore, your Ag concentration, sorry, this one should be Cl. So your Ag concentration will equal to this one, which is 1.0 times 10 to the negative 8. Okay, so once you do that calculation, you got 2 times 10 to the negative 10. Okay, then you're going to compare your QSP to the KSP provided. Okay, so the KSP provided here is actually 1.6 times 10 to the negative 10, right? Since your QSP is larger than your KSP, therefore you're going to see the precipitate form. All right? So the trick they want to play here is actually, do you have the ability to recognize that the CaCl2 will give you the effective Cl minus concentration of 2 times 10 to the 10. Okay, if you can see that, then the next thing is actually, you can actually compute the QSP properly. Okay, if the QSP is larger than your KSP, then the precipitate will fall. Okay, so those are the logic that you should have for this specific question. All right, so, that's actually all the things I want to actually say for uh, your midterm, okay? In terms of preparation of your final, not midterm, for your final, okay? This is actually what I would suggest, okay? Go back and then redo all the questions in my Hangout for each chapter, okay? Each chapter, you probably have 10 questions, okay? And then hopefully we have nine chapters, there's 19 questions, okay? After you finish that, go back and redo your midterm one questions. There's 23, yeah. Midterm two, another 23. Midterm three, another 23, okay? After you've done all those questions, okay? Get yourself, feel like, only after you feel like you are comfortable to solve those questions, okay? Go to your practice final, okay? Hide yourself, okay? You want to be fast and accurate, okay? So do your practice final, hide, okay? Put a um, uh, stopwatch right next to you, okay? See how fast you can just finish everything, okay? You want to actually make sure you can finish pretty much one question in three minutes, then you will feel actually quite comfortable when you do your final exam. Okay, by doing all those questions, okay, that's around 150 questions, like you should feel actually well prepared for your final. Okay, so don't go back and read your textbook. You don't have that time. Okay, you don't have the luxury to do that. Okay, just be very targeted, okay? the questions, understand how you should actually solve those questions. Okay. Luckily, all the questions that we have in our Hangout, we have the recording, right? If you don't know exactly how to solve it, go back and watch our recording. You will know how to do the things step by step. Okay. Then you should be able to have a good idea how to answer those things quickly and correctly. All right. And then by doing that, I think you should be able to do pretty well for your client. Okay, so those are the things that I can provide help for uh, these specific courses. Okay, before we end today's lectures, I just want to share some more things with you um, so that you may have a better idea what you're, what you're going to do uh, for the time in the, at the UH. Okay, 
I don't know if you can see this or not though. Okay, everyone can see this. Okay, so what's this? Hmm? This one, no, 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 no. This is, so you guys know, uh, when you apply for uh, graduate school or when you apply for the medical school, okay, when you apply for the higher educational position, okay. You need the letter right, right? This is actually one letter right, this one we see. This specific one is actually the one I received from Harvard. Okay, these are the things they care about. You guys never see this, right? Because you are not the one who's going to write all the things and no one wants to share this information with you. Okay, therefore, what do you do? You talk to your friends, right? And then you feel like okay, something is actually so important, but not the others, right? So then you feel like you are ready to apply. Okay, you feel like you have all the information. Okay, then you start to see these things. Then compare this one to your current knowledge, you realize there's actually a quite a lot of discrepancy between the two, right? Then you need to ask yourself, which one should I actually believe? This one is actually the real life example. Okay, so during the process of growing up, okay, we actually trying to learn specific rules that make sense to you. Okay, may not necessarily to make sense to everybody. Okay, and then you want to actually collect that group of rules to run your own work, right? You want to make sure the rule that you collect is true. Okay, and the way you can actually collect the good rules is that you talk to someone that is like knowledgeable. Okay, don't just talk to your friends. Okay, talking to your friends is good to ease your nervous, I guess. Okay, but may not be very helpful because he won't know this either, right? You want to talk to someone who is actually knowledgeable, okay, whose opinion is meaningful. Okay, and those people are the people that can actually help you for your life. There, those are the people who can actually help you to achieve your goal. Okay. So I want to actually point out a few things I think is actually so important that every student should actually know so that you guys can prepare for the rest of your stay in at the UH. Okay. Most of it is actually the you guys are freshmen still, right? Most of you are freshmen, right? That means actually you still have a couple of years to achieve these things. Okay, if I need to actually make some plan now. Okay. So Let's go through a few things that is actually important. I want to highlight the things for you. The first one, software. Okay, so we live in a world that, you know, AI is now become a new norm to your life, right? You want to actually know how to actually communicate with those uh, AI things, right? It means actually you need to learn some software. Okay, so this is actually something that's going to happen no matter what how you feel about it, it's going to happen. Okay, and those good school, those great school, they also see the things, right? So, we still have time, prepare for it. There's some courses, okay? Make yourself will be able to actually communicate using some uh, computational language. Okay, so that is something that's important that I want you to actually know, okay? Second, Communications. Okay, so communication is actually one of the most important things that can bring you to a level better than you think you are. Okay, so communication becomes a very important thing in the future. Okay, right now we're living in this era that we have a lot of information, right? But not everybody can share a sort of information. Okay. So how to actually commu communicate effectively, okay, so that we can actually understand each other quickly is something or some ability that you want to have. Okay, so many of you, okay, including me when I was young, okay, I don't feel comfortable 
standing in front of people and then tell them how I feel about things, right? But if that is actually the mindset we always have, we will never have a chance to actually improve our ability to communicate. Okay, so starting from something simple. Okay, talk to your friend, talk to your classmate, trying to be the coach or some of them. Okay, teach them how to think. Okay, do practice. Okay, your communication skill will be improved greatly after three years, but you need to actually start it early. All right. Okay, so the third one, I don't think that's so critical. This one is important too. Okay. okay, so most of the time when I talk to a student, I say, hey, you did not do this right, hey, okay. you should do, okay. this is actually not correct, okay. The first response from most of students is they try to defend themselves, okay. But defending yourself in front of your instructor or mentor is pointless. Pointless, right? What I, okay, what your mentor or instructor is trying to teach you is actually, okay, the right way to think about it, okay? So if you keep defending it, okay, you're actually wasting your energy and wasting your time. Okay, what I would suggest is actually digest the information, okay? If you have a good mentor, you should actually provide constructive feedback, comments, right? So think through those things, okay, in an open-minded attitude. It's very important, okay? Most of kids, they just say, they're just so busy with fighting back, okay? That's not helpful, okay? We think about it, okay, I made this mistake, fine. How should I actually avoid this? Hopefully, there's a better way to handle the things next time. That's why I call the positive thinking. Right. We all learn from mistake. Okay. Making mistake is nature. Okay. But learn from mistake is critical. Learn from mistake is actually things that can distinguish you from others. Okay. So do this. Okay. Listen carefully. Okay. And then some of them I feel is still too far for you guys. Okay. But I'm going to point out the one that's important. There should be actually one more. Okay, so we're still in the learning stage. Okay, so there's actually not too much learning stage for you remain, right? So right now you're pursuing your bachelor, right? What will be the next stage? If you continue this route, it will be the master, right? And then you will be the PhD, and that's it. PhD is actually the highest possible degree you can actually get in human system, right? So you actually almost reach to the end. Okay. So you want to actually really hold on to all these chances to improve yourself. Okay. And then using the things that you learn, okay, to make sure you have enough tool set before you actually go out to fight in the real world. Okay, so in order to do that, okay, you want to be flexible. Okay, once you see opportunity comes, they can actually make you grow, when you become better. Okay, be flexible. Okay, I know everybody was talking about the work life balance. Okay, so I got asked this question all the time too, right? So people ask me, how do you have an actually good work life balance? Okay, so this is actually my life. Okay, when I was an assistant professor, okay, I come to a lab at 6 a.m. I leave home, I go back home at 5 30, Monday to Friday. Okay, I come on Saturday, 6 a.m., go back home at noon. Okay, every week I work more than 60 hours. Okay, do you think I have work life balance? How would you say that? Do you think I have work-life balance? So who decides whether you have work-life balance? Hmm? 
You, right? Yourself, right? So do I actually feel I'm depressed? Okay, I'm trying to read, you know, throw away all the things that's relevant to me. And then I only focus on the things I'm doing in at school. Of course not, right? So I guess that's if we actually participate in this very last lecture, it's actually the people who actually know me quite well now. Okay. What is the things I value the most? My family, right? Who is that? <laughs> yeah, my family, right? So I said I can actually give up everything for my family, right? But how long do I work? 60, 60 hours per week. Okay, it's very long, right? But do I call myself out of work life balance? No, I do not. Okay, so the things I do is actually I only focus on the things that I can do at school during my 60 hour. Once I go home, no one can find me. I belong to my family. Yeah, really. I mean, I did not ever send an email to my student anymore. Okay, so sometimes you actually send me email during the weekend. I don't really like it, but you know, <laughs> out of courtesy, being a good uh, mentor or advisor or instructor, I still reply to you. Okay. But, you know, the work-life balance is really, it changes. Okay, you need to actually really know what you want the most. Okay, so really ask yourself, what do you want? What is actually things that's important to you? Prioritize things is something that you need to learn for your life, not just for the degree, not just for your, not forever. Okay, it's for your life. Okay, because at different stage, you will know, okay, different things is actually more important than the other, right? So you want to actually know how much time you can actually devote it to achieve the things that you want to have, okay? So with that being said, it also tells you that a very important thing that you should know is that be practical, okay? So if you say, I want to be a professor by only willing to devote one hour per week, that's not going to happen, right? And then if you work 30 hours, and you feel like you're out of work-life balance. Yes, you're out of work-life balance because you don't have proper and quite expectation to the things that you want, right? We should know and you should have a good understanding about the price tag of every single thing you want to actually pursue. Okay, if you have that thing seen clearly, it's a lot easier for you to actually achieve work-life balance. Okay, so for me, I know this other time I need to do for my research. This other time I need to devote it for my student, right? But that's fine. I will just do it. Okay, but all the other times, okay, you cannot cross the <laughs> cross the line. Okay, all those times actually for my family, right? For my kids, for my wife. That's the time to devote it. Okay, so if you have this open mindset, I think it's you probably can do pretty well. You won't have a problem of this work-life balance. Okay, so keep this in mind because it's very useful and it's very important. It's going to apply to you once you become older. Okay, all right. So all the things, okay, since we're actually recording all the things, right? You can go home, take a look about what other things that can be important inside all these applications, okay? Come up with a plan for yourself. Okay. You still have three more years to go, right? Come up with a plan and make it happen. Okay. And hope this will actually improve your life okay, in the future. Okay. To conclude uh, this semester's lectures, okay, I want to emphasize a few things. First, it's your life. You are the driver. You made the call. Very important, okay? Be much sure. Okay. Second, think positively, think long term. Okay, they will actually help you to solve many things that are confusing in front of you. Okay. Third, be open minded. Okay, and then work for your own future. All right. So I will stop here and thanks for your participation. Hope you enjoy it. Thank you.
All right, good luck with your final, okay?